Hey everyone, Gil Gross here. Post match, Dominic Team versus Pablo Andujar. First round, 2021 French Open. If you're not here for spoilers, off the video in three, two, one. After being up two sets to love, Dominic Team drops this one to Andujar. He is out of the French in five sets. Final score: four six five seven six three six four six four. Quite the way to start a Sunday morning in Paris. Not quite start. Osaka was on first um, on Chatrier. But uh, man, oh man. So the struggles continue for Dominic team. I have a lot to say, so I'm going to try to be uh, concise here. And let me start with Andujar and the story. My goodness. This is such a good story. I You, you got to be happy for Pablo Andujar. Here's why. This man was 32 years of age. He was ranked 1,821. I've been reading some places that he had three right elbow surgeries. I've been reading other places that he had four. Whatever it is, that's a lot of elbow surgeries. This guy could have called it quits easily. I'd like, I'd love to know more about his story because uh, there's something special there to be 32 years old, to have completely lost your ranking, and to to be able to start from scratch. So, very happy for Anduhar. Great story. He's now 35, so now this is three years later. And talk about not giving up. It's kind of thematic, right? Obviously, he was down two sets to love, and someone asked me at the. Uh, at the start of the third set at about two all, I said, Gil, what's going on in that match? And I said, well, uh, you know, two love team, Andujar still fighting. Those were my exact words because it was very clear that he wasn't going anywhere and that he was not discouraged. Uh, but not just that when it comes to not giving up. This match was extraordinarily physical. The first set, second set, the third set. Uh, and that never stopped. And Andujar was down a break. If he went away, the physicality might have dropped a little bit, but Pablo never let that happen. He made sure that point in and point out, no matter what level of belief he had at that point, down a break, down a set and a break to a two-time French Open finalist, you know, um, he always played every point like it mattered and only because of that he kept up the the level of physicality in that match and it paid dividends later so through two sets Andujar down two sets to love but how long did it take about two hours about two hours to get through those first two sets and that became very very important and that was a, a testament to Andujar's attitude he was so positive throughout and then when it came to his game machine like machine like just just gave very very little away um the exception there are some games here and there but over the course of a five set match you're going to have that uh Andujar was incredibly solid and uh I will get a little bit more into his game but for the most part this matchup is still on Dominic Team's racket um no disrespect to Andujar Dominic Team should win this match uh, he expects to win this match. If he were at his best, he would have won this match, and he didn't. So first, I just want to play a quick uh, clip from his press conference because Dominic Team shedding light on where his mental is at right now. I mean, it's amazing to reach such a big goal, but at the same time, something is different after. And as I said before the tournament, it's it's a, a big learning process, and... Um, Despite the loss, which hurt so much, I, I still hope I can uh, bounce back stronger than before. But, well, right now, I don't know when the moment is coming. Team's still not right. Team's still not motivated. Not finding the, the, uh, the mindset or not feeling how he wants to feel on the court when it comes to being a competitor out there. So uh, he's still not back. It's going to be a process. It's going to take a while. The question was always, how long is it going to take? And I think we asked that question after he skipped Miami um, or, or after after he, he went out early in Dubai. Um, we asked that question, and the answer is still waiting. 
you know, I, I still think there should be a fair bit of confidence on Dominic Team eventually finding his spark, but right now it's still not there. Um, we'll see when it comes back. And Dominic Team is is wondering the same thing: is well, when am I going to get my mojo back um, and my, and my motivation? Um, so I want to lead off with that because obviously it was probably the the most important thing. But the analysis isn't going to stop there. Uh, there's still plenty to break down when it comes to this match and Dominic Team's game and where it is faltering more specifically. Uh, just one more macro point before then. Uh, there is a, a larger pattern that has persisted and it existed before Dominic Team won the U.S. Open, before he had um, any of these motivation issues. And um, that is that in his last eight majors, he has either made the final or lost in the first round in six. So eight slams, three first round exits, three first round losses. Talk about boom or bust and boom or bust. That's kind of that's kind of how Dominic team plays, not just on a macro scale. That's how he plays on a shot by shot basis on the microest of scales. Dominic team is a go big or go home player. And unfortunately, it's also been a frustrating pattern for him and his fans at majors. That is a pattern that is not um, something that we can expect to go away, but it's something we should keep in mind is that Dominic team is not built for winning ugly. He assumes too much risk. He takes these big, aggressive, daunting, bold cuts at the tennis ball. And in order to execute those at a high enough efficiency, you have to have timing and you have to have confidence. You have to have conviction. That style of game does not work without those things. He does not have that built-in safety net, that level of safety that Andy Murray has, that Novak Djokovic has, that that Nadal has. Uh, that doesn't exist in Dominic Team's game. One example is in the third set, on serve at 3-4. You could point to this as kind of the straw that broke the camel's back the first time that Andujar could really feel like he was in charge of this, not in charge of the match, but he was, the, the comeback trail was being paved, was at 3-4 in, uh, in the third set. This was a terrible game by Dominic Team. It began with a missed overhead. It had a double fault. There were two unforced errors in there. Uh, one of them was actually kind of forced, but it was already 1540 at that point. Um, but but uh, the point kind of stands that like it, that's an atrocious game. And these games happen with with team. The reason why he can accept those is because there's going to be some games where he is so exceptional that it does not matter what the opponent does when team is at his best. He is going to steal these games from you because he is so uh, explosive and superhuman at times. So this is the Dominic team experience. You are going to have lows with your highs and that predated the confidence issues. All right. Now, now I want to talk about specifically this match, only this match, things that I saw. Um, first and foremost, when team takes the passive approach that he took on his backhand for most of this match. The backhand becomes a liability. When he is not taking his cuts on that side, the backhand just isn't great. Uh, and this match at times reminded me of the Diego Schwartzman quarterfinal from last year uh, because uh, Andujar's backhand is a lot like Diego's backhand, which is such a, a tremendous compliment that I am paying to the Spaniard, and I'm doing so intentionally. Uh, the shot is so darn stable, so solid. It's very difficult to break that side down. Not only is it difficult to coax unforced errors, or not even to coax, but to wait for unforced errors. Not only is that nearly impossible, it is also nearly impossible to find balls to attack off of that side. It is just a rock-solid backhand. Uh, Dominic Team's backhand 
is not as solid. It's actually not. Uh, so when he is not taking his rips down the line, when he is hitting his floating slice, which is a shot that can be effective in moderation, in fact, is effective in moderation, uh, especially when it sets up the forehand. Um, but when he is leaning on that too often, and Andujar is just hitting forehands off of it, or when he is uh, hitting the ball uh, passively and kind of decelerating and hitting his topspin backhand cross court, uh, which he doesn't hit with tons of intention. When he is doing that, his backhand becomes a liability in a matchup against a player like Andujar. Team's one-handed backhand is really, really great. It's really great when he's taking his chances and firing down the line. He has to do it, and he didn't have the confidence in this match to do it. And my point is that when he's not, his backhand is just ordinary because it's not that solid. It's not that machine-like and consistent. He, when he goes cross-court with it, uh, when he trades it cross-court, there are some players who can win that game against him, that cross-court, backhand-to-backhand kind of neutral uh, exchange. There are players who can win that against him. Andujar and Schwartzman are both players who can do that. So team needs to take more chances with his backhand down the line. Uh, that was something that I thought persisted from the uh, basically throughout the match. Uh, the next points I want to make are things that that flipped a little bit uh, because team did win the first two sets of this match. Uh, in, in the first set, it was weird because it was the first game of the match that team broke and he just held serve from there. In the second set, it was really the uh, the forehand um, dominance from team. This is why he should win this matchup because team team's forehand is a Ferrari and, you know, Andujar is not bad, but it's a Mazda. It's reliable, but it's not it's not a weapon. And that should be why team really wins this, this match on clay rather easily, right? But... Um, the the short points were going team's way because of that. And what really shifted in this match from the second set especially uh, and beyond is that advantage that team had, that decided advantage in shots zero through four really dissipated, dissipated almost completely from that point on. Uh, the first reason for that was the second serve. The team's second serve started to get destroyed um, really badly. And he became much too predictable with that serve, kicking it to the Andujar backhand, which is the stronger return for Andujar. Uh, again, just a very, very uh, stable shot, taking it on the rise. And Andujar hit that shot beautifully and found team's backhand. So then instead of team opening with that forehand, that was giving Andujar problems in the second set. Team was having to hit a lot of backhands off of almost every single time he hit a second serve. Andujar, boom, backhand cross court or backhand inside in on the deuce side to find the Dominic team backhand and was actually rushing team on that side. We know what happens when team is rushed on the backhand. Uh, it becomes a very difficult shot for him. You get miss hits, you get short balls. Uh, it becomes a real mess. So, uh, team needed to go more to the Andujar forehand, never recognized that. This was a problem early in team's career when team, who has one of the best kick serves in the sport, uh, there was a point in time where that was his only serve and he was very predictable. Kick to the righty backhand, kick to the righty backhand, kick to the righty backhand, and he just kind of fell on that habit and... It comes back to maybe confidence. It, was he not feeling himself enough to go for those riskier second serves that he's less comfortable hitting? Did he have to go to old reliable time and time again and go to the Andahar backhand? Just look how many times Pablo was right on that, just ripping it. And that's rare for team. Normally he protects his second serve well because he's got a great second serve, but he was just going to the same spot too often. Uh, the next thing that changed was the loss of power that Dominic team experienced loss of power that um, it would be impossible for me to say with a hundred percent certainty where it came from, but I can give some candidates here. Uh, the first candidate is that it's a fitness problem. Um, loss of power from a fitness problem, just from, from physical strength and fatigue. Um, and 
What ended up happening was Andujar began to neutralize forehands that he has no business neutralizing against a team in peak form, especially in the fourth set and a lot of the times in the fifth set. You saw sometimes Andujar was guessing correctly on team's midcourt forehands and turning the points around. Uh, team had one forehand winner in both the third and the fifth sets off the ground, one. And in those sets, it was also a big problem. Very low forced error numbers as well, under three in both sets. So doing no damage with the forehand, when he got those those short balls, it seemed like Andujar was neutralizing it. That should never happen. It doesn't really matter who you are. Um, even if you're, let's say, someone who moves great, covers the court great, I don't care if you're Novak Djokovic, when Dominic Team gets a short ball on his forehand, when he's at his best, night-night, he should finish, and he wasn't. Uh, so it's either fatigue, it's either he got tired as the match wore on and he just didn't have the strength, and that's why the miles per hour were, were dropping and he wasn't finishing, uh, but it also could be mentality because when it comes to racket speed and power, that also comes from a mindset. Uh, that comes from intensity. Swinging fast like Dominic Team does, that takes intensity, effort. And if you don't have enough gur, uh, and I don't know how else to put it, if you don't have that killer instinct, that 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 fight like an animal, like a tiger, uh, you're going to hit slower, right? Uh, this is kind of the modern game. This is like what uh, my Spanish my my Spanish way coach would would get on me about if I wasn't swinging fast enough, he would say, hello, uh, let's go. Swing like an animal. And Dominic Team usually swings like an animal, but is swinging like an animal a lot less these days. Slowing down that racket. Last point is this. Return strategy. Return strategy for Team all over the place. Uh, I don't know why. He, he, in the past, he's had something that's worked. Back up and rip it. Back fence, Domi. Buy yourself some time and try to swing through that ball on a surface like clay. You can do that. But for some reason, team was moving up in the court um, and just not getting as much on the turn return. Blocking it sometimes, just kind of uh, not getting through the ball. And what... what what ended up happening was he turned Andujar's forehand, which, as I said, is a Mazda, and team made it look a lot more like a Ferrari after the first two sets because team's blocking it back, and now he's not in good defensive position. If team is on the back fence and he returns it short, at least he's in position to defend against Andujar's first forehand. And Andujar's first forehand is not good enough to hit by team. So... Overall, it's like confounding tactically, and it, it, the same thing happened in Rome. When team moves up, it doesn't work as well, and he's still doing it. What is it? Is it fatigue? Is he trying to save energy by not? Because uh, you know, if he stands back, he's got to take a big swing, and then he's got to try to move up in the court and work hard with his feet. Um, he can't cut off the angles as much. So does he just want to exert less effort? Is he just mentally foggy and not thinking too cloudy? Whatever it is, the return strategy, not good. Another reason why what I said at the beginning when I talked about second serves, 0 0.0 through four shots, swung way in favor of Pablo Andujar. That's all I got on this match. Um, there is, There will be a mailbag tomorrow. Make sure... Uh, if you want to get in on the action for the mailbag, go to the homepage of my channel, click on the YouTube community tab, and leave me a comment. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.